This video looks at concepts of detectability and stabilizability. Previous videos then have introduced the concepts of observability and controllability for state space models such as the one given here. An important question arises about what statements can be made if a system is not fully observable or not fully controllable. And also you might wish to understand what are the causes of a lack of observability or controllability and wonder whether certain conditions can guarantee these. Now just a note here, the discrete case and the continuous case are exactly analogous when it comes to observability and controllability, so we're only going to look at the continuous time case here. Just a reminder then of the observability and controllability tests. So a convenient test of observability is the rank of a matrix M given here by C, C, A down to C, A to the N minus 1. And in essence, if A is dimension N by N, then we need the matrix M to be rank N to have full observability. And equivalently, for controllability, you'll see we have this matrix B, A, B all the way to A to the N minus 1, B, and the same. Um, test occurs that it's fully controllable if the rank of this matrix is at least n. And again a reminder, you get the same test for continuous and discrete systems. Equivalently, we said you could look at observability and controllability by first doing an eigenvalue eigenvector decomposition, summarized here. So we take the matrix A and we write it as the eigenvectors W times a diagonal matrix of the eigenvalues lambda times the left eigenvectors V. Now what we did next is we said let's construct the matrix C times W and a system is fully observable if and only if this matrix has no zero columns. Equivalently, we said let's construct the matrix VB and we said a system is fully controllable if and only if this matrix has no zero rows. Now the eigenmode approach, which is the one on this slide, is actually gives a lot more insight into the concepts of detectability and stabilizability, which is what we're going to cover in this video. So we're going to use these tests as opposed to the controllability observability matrices. Uncontrollable modes then, stabilizability. Let's assume that there exists some uncontrollable modes. So you'll see what I've done here is I've said there exists at least one J such that a row of the matrix VB, that is beta J transposed, is zero. So the Jth mode is uncontrollable. Now what happens to this particular mode which I've called ZJ brackets T? Well you can work out the behavior. It's going to be given by a formula like this. ZJ of T is e to the lambda JT ZJ of zero. Now clearly if the eigenvalue, that's the lambda J, is in the right half plane then this mode will diverge to infinity because this mode is not affected by the input. It's uncontrollable so if it's in the right half plane, it's going to diverge. So what do we get? Stabilizability means that all uncontrollable modes are convergent. So any mode where you have a beta j equal to zero must have a lambda j, which is, if I put it here, what we want is lambda j, in essence, is in the left half plane. So that's what stabilizability means. And conversely, stabilizability means that all unstable modes must be controllable. What about undetectable modes or detectability? Let's assume that there exist some unobservable modes in the system. So here you'll see what we've said is there exists a column of the matrix CW which is zero. So the corresponding mode cannot be observed. So what impact can we have here? Now, if we look at this mode, you'll see the underlying dynamics of this mode are given here, e to the lambda jt zj of 0. And this mode we cannot observe. So if the eigenvalue is in the left half plane, then this mode will converge to 0. And conversely, of course, if it's in the right half plane, this mode may be diverging to infinity. So detectability means that all unobservable modes must be 
convergent. And conversely, detectability means that all unstable modes must be observable. So a summary for you. Detectability, all unstable modes are observable and all unobservable modes are stable. And you'll see that really these two statements are saying the same thing in a different way. Stabilizability, all unstable modes must be controllable or in other words, all uncontrollable modes must be stable. Now, if a system has full controllability, then it must be stabilizable. And similarly, if a system has full observability, then it must be detectable. And a lack of controllability and observability can be due to a number of things. Most typically, you'll notice you get cancelling pole zero pairs, and that means that your state space model is higher order than is needed to represent the input output dynamics. You could have a poor choice of output measurement, and that could be the number and the type, and you could have a poor choice of inputs, and again, that could be the number and the type. So some remarks. The magnitudes of the variables beta j and gamma uh, j give an indication of the degree of controllability and observability of corresponding modes. So clearly, if you've got low values for these beta or this gamma, then your controllability or observability could be relatively poor, so that in practice, you may be, it may be difficult to control or difficult to observe, and your convergence could be quite slow. So poor controllability and reachability can be detected by poor conditioning of the corresponding matrices. So minimal realizations then. A system is said to be minimal if it has full controllability and full observability. A non-minimal system will have either or both uncontrollable and unobservable modes. And a key point here is we did, in some of the videos, talk about the use of canonical descriptions. And you'll remember we had a controller canonical form and an observer canonical form. But the key thing is canonical descriptions are not guaranteed to be full observable and full controllable. A minimal realization which assumes that you must therefore be stabilizable and detectable, is all that is needed for managing input-output behavior. And what you might want to do is, if you have a non-minimal form, you might be asking yourself, well, can I form a minimum form before I start? And there are MATLAB tools that allow you to do this. Some examples then. Here's an example which is controllable but not observable. So if we do the eigenvalue eigenvector decomposition, you'll see here's the eigenvectors and the left eigenvectors. And if I now calculate the matrix, not VB is the one I want, VB and CW, you'll see VB is full, so it's fully controllable, but CW has got zeros in the second column, so I have an unobservable mode. Now, the corresponding eigenvalue for this mode is at minus one, and therefore it's in the left half plane. And so the key summary is our unobservable mode is in the left half plane, and therefore we are detectable. But you'll notice the comment we gave earlier that if you are either, either uncontrollable or unobservable, there's gonna be a pole zero cancellation if you find the corresponding transfer function. So here's the corresponding transfer function, and what do you notice? I've got an s plus 1 in the numerator and an s plus 1 in the denominator. There's a cancellation. Second example. This example is controllable and not observable, same as the previous one. So again, here's the eigenvectors. And if I look at the VB matrix, you'll see I've got no zeros, so we're fully controllable. If I look at the CW matrix, you'll notice I've got a zero in the first column, so I'm unobservable. Now, the corresponding eigenvalue here is at 2, which is in the right half plane. So my unobservable mode is unstable, and therefore I am not detectable. And again, you'll see the transfer function has a pole zero cancellation, and here you'll see the cancellation is the corresponding eigenvalue. So I've got this S minus 2. Next example. This example is observable, but not controllable. So you'll see the CW matrix is full, no zeros here, but I've got a zero 
in the VB matrix. So I've got an uncontrollable mode which corresponds to the first eigenvalue. Now if I look at this eigenvalue, I find it's at 1, it's in the right half plane, and therefore I am not stabilizable. And again, if you look at the transfer function, you'll see there's the cancellation. So this system is in non-minimal form. Next example, here again, you'll see that I've got a zero in the first row. And therefore, the eigenvalue is at minus one. This is in the left half plane, and therefore this system, although it's not controllable, it is stabilizable. And again, if you look at the transfer function, you'll see the cancellation is given at s plus one. So some remarks. The four previous examples all had pole zero cancellations in the corresponding transfer functions, so they were not in minimal form. And in summary, we've introduced the concepts of detectability and stabilizability. We've shown that a system has full observability and controllability. It will always be detectable and stabilizable and in minimal form. But a lack of either controllability or observability indicates the system is not in minimal form. And depending on the nature of the uncontrollable or unobservable modes, the system may or may not lack stabilizability and detectability.